The University of Lagos, known as Unilag, is one of Nigeria's most prestigious and sought-after federal university. Continue. Well, it's not surprising because Unilag is located in Lagos, which is like the most populated city and the center of excellence. Everybody wants to live in Lagos, everybody wants to work in Lagos, everybody wants to school in Lagos. And this is what makes Unilag the most competitive university. If you want to study medicine, Unilag is the best place because all the best hospitals in Nigeria are in Lagos. If you want to study mass communication, all the media houses, like the top media houses, are in Lagos. So any course you want to study, Unilag is the best place to be. Now, the challenge with getting admission to Unilag is actually getting a good aggregate score to beat the cutoff mark for whatever course you are applying to study. In this video, I'm going to be guiding you from my experience on how you can navigate and actually gain admission to the University of Lagos. So if you are new to this channel, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. Now, before we go into the video proper, I actually found out that some students don't know how to calculate the Unilag for CTME aggregate score. Now, you need to know this calculation because it is what determines your admission chances. Now, quickly, to calculate your Unilag for CTME or aggregate score, you will need your JAM score, you need your for CTME score, and you need your O level. So, Unilag uses JAM, O level, and for CTME. And your JAM is going to account for 50% that is you divide your jam score by 8 so if you have let's say 250 you divide 250 by 8 that gives you from your 50 percent your positive ME score is 30 percent and your O level accounts for 20 percent now if you don't know how to do this calculation based on the percentage I just listed you can check the link in the description of this video to see uh, the procedure and examples of this calculation. Now let's go into the video proper. The first thing you need to do to be able to gain admission to the University of Lagos is determine your admission chances using your JAM score. Uh, sadly, for someone like me who wrote JAM five times, I can tell you that one of the reasons why students are denied admission every year is because of their JAM score. They apply for competitive courses with low JAM score. Let's say for example, Continue. you want to study medicine and surgery at Unilag. You have no business applying for that course if your jam score is below 290. Even for someone with 290, the chances is still slim, you understand? If you are not sure of your jam score or you are not sure of your chances, you can let me know in the comment and I will definitely give you the best advice. Now, the next thing you need to do is to actually know the format for the POSITME. I always like using myself as an example. Mm -hmm. In 2012, when I sat for my first POSITME, though it was not for Unilag, it was at the Delta State University, uh, that was my first jam. I went to the Delta POSITME without having a knowledge of the format of the POSITME. And it sounds funny because to this day, a lot of students still make that mistake. They go for post-CTME exam, they don't even know the kind of questions they are about to meet. This post-CTME comprise of 40 questions, 40 questions, objective questions for 30 minutes. 40 questions for 30 minutes. And the exam is structured like your jam exam where you use your computer like it's a CBT test where you have to click option A, option B, option C or option E as the correct answer. Now what are the subjects you will be meeting in this for CTMA exam? Number one, you'll be meeting use of English, which is like English language. Uh, most of the time you come across like 15 questions from English. And secondly, you will meet mathematics, which can also be 15 questions. Now, this is for like all courses. So I'm not saying those applying for medical lab science are going to meet use of English and mathematics. I'm talking about all the applicants. You meet use of English, you meet math uh, mathematics, and you meet general paper. Are you playing? I know you'll be asking, what the heck is general paper? Well, general paper is like current affairs and information about Unilag. 
don't worry uh, in a moment i'm going to tell you how you can really navigate through these subject combination especially the uh, general paper so just know that you'll be meeting 40 questions in your pusiti ME. and sometimes you lag me decide to bring questions from your jam subject combinations the third thing you need to do to pass the unilag pusiti ME exam is to actually start studying now and one of the best study strategy you can do is actually draft out a study timetable. Make sure you study at least one subject each day. So today you can see, well, I'm going to be tackling English language. I'm going to be tackling general paper. You know, you are just meeting about theory subjects in the post -TME. So make sure you study, like take it very serious. It can be confusing on what you need to actually study. This is where the past question comes in. Continue. Do everything in your power to get the Unilag past question. This past question is a compilation of questions over the years, some are even over 10 years. Make sure you get it. If you can get a soft copy, good and fine. But if you can't get a soft copy, make sure you go and purchase the hard copy. Because when you get a past question, you get a better understanding of the structure for the exam. The general paper I mentioned earlier, you actually know what the general paper is all about, the kind of things you are expected to know in terms of current affairs, about the Unilag, and even in mathematics and English language. I know someone is some here thinking, if I get this past question, I will just cram everything. Don't try that, don't do that. Cramming past question is actually very, very bad. It's, it's, it's going to cause a lot of issues for you on the exam day. Now, when you get a past question, make sure you study it. If I, when you look at the past question, you know the topics because the questions are from different topics, you know, from your jam syllabus. Now, just take out those topics and start reading them. Read them in your textbook. You don't need any special textbook. You don't need any special material. It's the same textbooks. Uh, materials you use for your jam that you will also need for your CTME exam. So make sure you take out those topics and start studying them. Now by the time you are able to like cover those topics, you cannot go back to the past question and start to answer. And when you answer a question, you must know the reason for that answer. So if for eventual you fail a particular question, look at the answer, go back and read it and come back. It actually sticks more. Unlike when you just try to, uh, the answer is B, okay, the answer is B, that means the answer is B, you don't even know why the answer is B. On that day of the exam, you might see that exact question, but then because of the confusion, because of the pressure, you will still end up feeling it. But if you are taking the time to read on that particular concept, on that topic, you will be able to answer it no matter how they twist the question. Apart from studying, which is paramount, another thing you need to do is to stay updated by joining you no know, different social media uh, platforms uh, for new lag students and aspirants. I always advise students when you are applying to any school, make sure you get to know everything about that school. So you can join Facebook groups, you can join WhatsApp group. Uh, you must be very careful about the groups you join. You can also join my, my group. I have a group for aspirants and students also. And in addition, you can join other groups and make sure that these groups are where they post relevant information about the post registration, about the deadline, about the exam dates, about the cut off mark you know this kind of information that will you will find helpful so that you will not be in isolation sometimes on this platform you can come across students who share their own experience about how they also pass their post CTME exam some of the challenges you might face on that day so by the time you have this information before and you know be better equipped the last thing you need to do which is like the most important requirement is meeting the departmental cut of mark. It is the reason why I have advised for you to prepare very well and make sure you are applying to a course that you stand a chance for admission. The departmental cut of mark is an aggregation of the scores of all the students applying for a particular course. It is the reason why 
cutoff mark is not a fix. So I can't tell you that the cutoff mark for this year for a course like political science is going to be this and that. No, it's because it is after the post CME that is when the university cannot determine the cutoff mark for every department. If you don't meet the cutoff mark, you can't be admitted for that course you are applying to study. If you are not still sure of your chances, you can let me know in the comment. Tell me the course you are applying to and your jam score and I will give you the best advice. I'm rooting for you. I wish you success in your exam and in your admission pursuits. It's my prayer that in the next few weeks, in the next few months to come, You'll be a student studying your dream course at the University of Lagos.